y'all catch that? To pray, thy will be done, which we're saying, God, let your will be done, not mine be done. It says, I must be willing, Christy Hamilton, my will, if the answer requires it, that my will, what I'm wanting, what I'm desiring, what I'm pursuing must be undone. What I'm building, if it's not from God, must be undone. So his will can be fulfilled. And if we're wanting to live a life that's pleasing, holy, sacrificing, an aroma that's pleasing to the Lord, put a smile on his face, we got to be building his will, you know, bringing things forth that's of him. Welcome to Live Your Life Out Loud podcast. I am your host, Stephanie Thayer. This is a place for tired and overwhelmed women to gather together. Whether you are seeking or already following God, I aim to bring hope, fulfillment, and purpose to your life. So let's dig in. Welcome back. I'm so glad you're here for the second part of Christy and I chatting. If you missed it, go back to the prior episode and you can catch up on our conversation about hearing from the Holy Spirit and how important it is. So we're going to dive right in. And not saying that we don't need podcasts, mentorships, discipleship groups, uh, preachers, you know, all of them. We do. But you have to know, like, what is their life like? What are, what are their fruits like outside of the church? You know, like, are they truly living for the Lord? Are they pointing people to Jesus, the word? Like, hey, like, get in the word, get in prayer, you know? Or they're like, come to me, lean on me for prophecy. Lean on me for Look a word. Yeah. Like, mm -mm, no, no. Because yeah. even though I, I, I do believe in the fivefold ministry now, um, after, you know, you know, the whole summer camp thing and somebody saying they're a prophet. And I was like, I probably should study this after camp because <laughs> I couldn't tell you if you did or didn't. I, I didn't have any biblical. I do believe those people are truly called into that here very clearly from the Lord because of that calling on their life and God, how, how God made them. But does that mean that other people can't hear from him? No, absolutely not. But I will say as a person, as a young lady, um, to other ladies, women of God, and men who hear this, be very leery of people, pastors, whatever they call themselves, who are more pulling you to them and not him. It should always and, be directed up. Yes. To the Lord. Yes. And yes. again, I go back to like, what is their life like? You know, and the people that are quote unquote following them, like, are they being sharpened? Like, how is the ministry? Is the ministry like the people being formed to the image of Christ, or are they just very worldly? Now that one can be a 50, 50, you know, cause I mean, you have some people, it's like a pastor can give it on a fire, like brooming message. And then people are like, Meh. you know, <laughs> there's so this little church around the corner from our house. And uh, my whole family was super sick a few years ago. And so I was like, well, I'm going to go to church. And of course I sat in the very back near the door in case I needed to run away. Cause you never know. It could be a scary church. Mm. And there were probably 50 people in this church. Yeah. And the pastor was on fire. He was so good. And I sat there thinking, wow, it's so interesting, Lord, how like what you've called him to and what he is ministering to is very, very small. And then you have some that pastor to hundreds of thousands on TV or on the, we just, you don't know. And you can't, God's ways are not our ways. The things that he looks at are not what we yeah. look at. Right. And so yeah. um, he may use you at that factory job. He may use you with dirty diapers at the park. He may use you in your classroom with the really annoying student next to you. You just, you don't know. <laughs> right. It's true. I know you giggle because you know, I'm right. Um, I'm sitting here <laughs> thinking I've, I've, I've been around people at church. I, I, I get used out on the green way and I have, crazy stories there too. So. <laughs> so, well, there's also, I wrote down some other that, you know, um, some people hear from the Lord through angels. You see a lot of angels show up in, um, yep. Old Testament like especially. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, you mentioned visions, dreams, um, different symbolism sometimes, but we do have to be really careful because mm -hmm. there's a lot of deception in witchcraft yes. and a lot of people think certain positive things are not witchcraft. Like, mm. Yeah. dowsing or horoscope or um what else is like yoga i know i know girlies don't come for me but there's a lot of things that seem great but they're they're deceptive it's a misrepresentation of what god has for us yeah 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 uh miracles god so he does miracles all the time yeah uh 
a lot of us aren't paying attention to them. They're, I mean, this is one of my favorite questions. People are like, oh, the, the Holy Spirit doesn't exist. The, the works are dead. Okay. So then, you know, a few minutes later, you say, have you ever heard of a miracle or seen a miracle? Oh, yeah. You know, my grandma, whatever, had a scan and it was gone. So only like some of God's, like only some of Holy Spirit's gifts yeah. still exist. Yeah. We, we, we don't get to, I think it was Jefferson. I don't remember. There was someone that was a leader in the United States. They would literally like cut out portions of scripture that he didn't like. He would just remove it. We don't get to do that. You, That's you, scary. Yes. Just because there's things that make us uncomfortable in here or that we don't understand, it doesn't mean we skip over them. Stop skipping over. This is why you need to be in the word. I'll, uh, I'll tell you some of the challenges that God has given me recently. You know, he, from a month ago, he told me to get back to carrying my word everywhere I go, everywhere I go. So even if I'm on the little cart on the greenway, you can ask my coworker if Melody was here, she would tell you she always has it in the cart with her. I always Is it a little Bible? Big Bible. What are we talking? It's, it's this Bible right here. Yeah. Like, like what's minus five pounds. It goes everywhere with me. Everywhere. And my he recently I want to say it was this past week. Um, you know, he's been telling me, study, study, show yourself approved unto me, study. And he told me he's like, I want you to read at least a chapter a day. And most of her, I don't know, sorry, not a chapter a day, at least a book a day, because, you know, the Bible is broken up into books like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. 66, yep. Um, most of us would be like, oh my goodness, I can't do that. I'm so busy. How much are we on our phones? Uh, I have a story about that. <laughs> I, I thought you need to get off social. And, you know, I use social for work, but I right. have highly limited how I use it. Yeah. I have read... Okay, it's the middle of May as we're recording this. I have read 52 books this year because I put down, and I'm a reader, I know that, but you know how easy it is for me to pick up a novel and read 150 pages like it's nothing, and I'm like, oh, Lord, I can't spend 20 minutes reading. Yep, it's spiritual. It's our priorities. It's, it's our priorities. It's priorities, yes. and it's spiritual, too. I mean, How I, much I mean, Netflix I mean, did you watch? And you don't even get tired? Or TikTok or whatever. There is a literally a war fighting over you guys. There is an actual yeah. war. And, you know, I've been going through the New Testament. I stopped. I didn't go ahead and go to Revelation because my church is in Revelation right now. Because I was like, you know what? I'll just, you know. It's a deep one. <laughs> it's so good. And we're supposed to read it. I don't care how difficult you think it is. Just read it. Just read yeah. it. And well, that's, that's my suggestion. I was going to say, ask God yeah. too when you're reading. What, what do I need for today? Mm -hmm. How do I apply this to my life? What What's in it for me? And, you know, there are. Yes. There are people in other parts of the world that they come together for church and it's reading the Bible for hours. They are mm. mesmerized and so thankful for it. And, and in Western society, we want a performance. We want a show. And if the lights weren't right or the, the, the pastor didn't speak to me today or the worship music wasn't great, we are out of here. Yeah. Mm, I'm going to call you guys to more. If you are not satisfied with where you are in your life right now. I challenge you, 40 days, 40 days, read. Yeah. Set a timer for 10 minutes and then give yourself five minutes of reflection. I know you can give us 15 minutes. How do I apply this in my life? And I would be shocked. You could write to me if after 40 days, you have no, yeah. no changes in your yeah. attitude, how you see life, how the Lord yeah. talks to you. Absolutely. Right? I would definitely recommend starting with the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, or I mean, if you feel like maybe the Holy Spirit's saying, like, and you start feeling this nudging, like, Hey, Isaiah, like the book of Isaiah just keeps coming to you over and over and over. Try it, try it. You know, like when was it written? Like who wrote it? What's kind of the backdrop of it? You know, like, cause I have a study Bible and I'll just use, um, Me too. I love a study Bible. I'll just use James for example. Like this one, it has like the outline, like the introduction, like concerning trials and temptations, like chapter one verses two, and then it goes to 18. And it'll tell you like, James is a son of Mary and Joseph and the half brother of Jesus. So it kind of like breaks down like who the person is a little bit, like where do they possibly write it? And it kind of gives you the, the knowledge of what was happening then. So it gives you kind of like some better foundation of when you're reading it. Um, it's actually, James is my favorite book to recommend to people because it's only five chapters. It's, it's very, it's, it's so good. It tells you so much. So if you're like, I don't know how much I can commit to this God thing, 
just give us James. Just do, just do it. Um, the other thing I wanted to say about hearing from God, because I, I've never heard him be like, Stephanie, I'm talking to you. There are people that hear the Lord audibly, but I think a lot of, I think a lot of believers think that he does show up in unique ways to each of us. And you see that throughout scripture that is scriptural. So Mm -hmm. some of you might be seers. It might be visions and dreams. Some of you Mm -hmm. literally will hear it audibly. Some of you just have a knowing there are certain people Mm -hmm. they call it intuition or whatever, but they're checking Mm -hmm. it against scripture. They're asking, you know, a spiritual mentor to give them a confirmation and they do Mm -hmm. like there are other ways to do it. Um, Mm -hmm. And then also feelers, you know, I was told my whole life, that I was very sensitive and I was too emotional. Um, I know that's not true now, but I am tender. There are just times I have a feeling about something. Mm-hmm. God made me that way. That's not okay. a bad thing. I mean, out of control, it's a bad thing. But I check it in scripture. Mm-hmm. And I have come yep. to learn when it's my feeling and when it's his feeling. Yeah. Right? That's good. That's good. I- yeah. I really like that this whole conversation, it's it's going back to scripture. It's going back to scripture. You know, it's like, how does God speak? Does the Bible talk about that? You know, I mean, it does. I know a lot of people say he can speak in numbers. And I, I, I do agree, but I think there's a very fine line. The times that he has used that, it's always gone back to his word. Like it's, Always. And that can be yeah. another witchcraft. You have to be really careful. Yes. I've said this before. Don't be Googling angel numbers. There's something <laughs> biblical about angel numbers. I can't tell you how many people write to me about that, Christy. Um, oh, I put up Bible number, you know, 832, whatever. And they, I got angel number this. I'm like, show me where that goes back to scripture. It's not. Nope. nope. It's dark. Nope. Yep. It's, I think that's the sad part is like people find the counterfeit of what God's showing them, which is real. And mm-hmm. I think that a lot of people are getting that, but here's, I think Miss Lena Valser, she, in her book, um, the prophetic she voice of God, cause she has a huge heart for people hearing from God cause you can. And she talks about numbers, but there's nowhere in her book when she's describing this, that she tells you to go anywhere else, but the Bible, she always says, she tells and describes to people and even how God will, she'll hear a nudging Psalms, da da da, or here. And it's exactly what kept coming to her over and over, like this impression, like a thought that just kept running through her mind over and over and over. Cause a lot of times, and this is where I was talking about the flow of thoughts earlier that where a lot of times people get so stuck up of, Oh, I'm thinking of this. Is it you or is it the Holy Spirit that keeps throwing this to your mind that you need to go do this? Does that make sense? Well, yeah, and that's where I've started. You know, I've prayer journaled probably six years now, but write it down because okay. I, when I pray, I get God gives me images of things like mm. like egg or bell or I mean just like stuff that I don't have in my life, and so I'll write it down and then I look up in Scripture. Mm. Could this be anything? And sometimes it's nothing, but I take notes on like what I have found in Scripture. And there is almost always a confirmation if it is. And and there are times when I think, oh, no, that's me. That's just me thinking that. And then God shows, nope, that was me. Yeah. And so I feel like the more we spend time with him, the more we do get to know him. And that leads yeah. me to another verse, John 8, 47. He who belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Woo. So what's it take? Right. What's it take to repeat to that God? one? <laughs> <laughs> okay. He who belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. I just mic dropped with my hands. If you are not watching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's true. And you know, the whole time Jesus, our wonderful Messiah has been coming to my mind. And I was thinking of him earlier and I was also thinking the, the burning bush, the fire, but I'm going to go to the Messiah first. That's one of the symbolisms that God uses, right? Yeah. So when I was thinking of Jesus, I always thought of everything Jesus does. He does what the father does. How did he live his life? He lived his life pleasing, looking, seeing to the father. What is my father saying? What is my father doing? What am I supposed to be doing? And I believe it's Luke twenty two forty two. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you know he 
new to, I would say, if not entirely. Or yes, like if you are willing. Is, yeah, of how bad everything that was about to happen to him is going to be. So yeah, in that verse, he will. says, not my will, but your will, Lord. He doesn't want, he doesn't want to be crucified, which is the most horrible way to die. I mean, I don't think yes, anybody would sign up for it's that. It's horrible. He didn't deserve right. it, but yet... He was so willing to do every single little thing his father wanted mm -hmm. that he was willing to lay down his own will, not mine, but yours be done. Yeah. That's and right a, after that? That's a picture of how we're supposed to live our life. Yes. And I read a quote earlier this week, um, and I believe I posted it on my Instagram if I have it, on my, should have it on my pictures. Um, I'll show it to you. And I, I don't know who this lady is. I believe her name is Elizabeth. And it's a really pretty, and it talks about the will of God. And um, it's just a brief little thing. I thought it was really excellent timing. I have 50 bajillion pictures on my phone, so forgive me, everyone. <laughs> okay, here it is. Um, it's Elizabeth L Elliot, I believe. It says, to pray, thy will be done. I must be willing if the answer requires it, that my will be undone. So I'll catch that to pray thy will be done, which we're saying, God, let your will be done. Not mine be done. It says, I must be willing Christy Hamilton, my will, if the answer requires it, that my will, what I'm wanting, what I'm desiring, what I'm pursuing must be undone. What I'm building, if it's not from God must be undone. So his will can be fulfilled. And if we're wanting to live a life that's pleasing, holy, sacrificing, an aroma that's pleasing to the Lord, put a smile on his face, we got to be building his will, you know, bringing things forth that's of him. Um, and I will even go back to the prayer in Matthew 6, you know, when Jesus talks about how to pray, you know, he mentioned. That's, as soon as you started, I was like. Matthew 6, okay, it's the Lord's yeah, Prayer. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of times, like, and I'm not even saying, mentioned about praying in tongues, but, like, a lot of times when I re revert to my native language, you know, I'll start saying, like, um, our Father in heaven, your name be honored as holy, but a lot of times I'll end up saying, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because a lot of times what people don't realize before things come to the natural, we see what's in the natural. It's done in the heavens first, and then it comes down here. There's a spiritual realm, and then there's a natural realm. Mm -hmm. um, I talk about Ephesians 1, 9, two, 9 through 10 a lot, mm -hmm. and it speaks of, He made known to us, He made known to us the mystery of His will. So His will doesn't have to be mystery. It doesn't have to be this unknown plan, and you're never going to know what God wants for your life. You never know who you're supposed to marry, what college you're supposed to go to, what career you're supposed to pursue, what church you're supposed to go to. We're like, should I invest into this for my retirement, or should I invest? No. He will make it known to you. It's His will. The mystery will be revealed to you. But well, you and let's be honest. Money. Okay. We want... Let me rephrase. I want, I want the whole plan, Lord. Just let me know yep. where we're going, what we're doing. And the other part of this verse says, according to his good pleasure, he knows we're not ready. We're not capable. We would go hide it probably because the things that he often calls us to are not our strengths. By the way, he gave you all your strengths because he's going to demonstrate his ability through us. And it doesn't have to be grandiose. It's not about how many mm -hmm. likes you have or followers or, but he, you are going to very intentionally impact someone else because of him. And so he often just gives us that one step and to be vulnerable and trust him. By the way, something that convicted me that was, that was so hard for me uh, really in the last few years is this need for control which you wanting to know the plan is a mm. huge need for control. Um, That's a good, most women are, are more controlling than they realize. And I think some of it's how we're wired, but giving that up, that control, that need for control is a lack of faith in the Lord. Ooh. That is saying, I know, I good. know it's like, Oh, stab to the heart. It's saying, <sighs> It's saying, oh, yeah, that's sweet, God, but I know better than you do, which just goes back to our prayer life, all these different things, how we act. You don't know. Really? 
he, he put you here at this time for a purpose. He knows every hair on your head. He knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. You think he doesn't have a great plan for you? And then we get in the way, but we make all these problems. <laughs> that's a, uh, that is, that's really, that's really good. Cause I remember you actually posted this on your Instagram, this lady warning Christians that they're actively in a form of witchcraft and they don't even know it. And it's because okay. they're controlling. And Derek Prince said it, um, he described witchcraft as in any time you're trying to control someone um, which is not through the Holy Spirit, but any other spirit of the Holy Spirit, you are operating in witchcraft because you're using a different spirit and you don't even realize that you've opened yourself up to control to dom to not to dominate, intimidate, and manipulate. And there are unfortunately I don't have them with me to say this, but there are examples of like those different attributes in people through the Bible that so yeah. talking about control, um there's a very fine line of like, because he's not going to show you the whole picture, but he's going to put some light because he lights her path. And that's part of like walking by faith and not by sight. Um, I mentioned, I didn't mention this, but this local pastor, he's really more of a prophet, not a pastor, but <laughs> at RTTM, he mentioned that like when you're driving home in the dark, when you leave there, you know, leave the church. You can't see all the way home with that one light, but that one light, like going down the path, it's going to light your pathway every step. You know what I mean? Like you're not going to get the whole picture, but you're going to get, it's just like when you're driving out in the country, you, you know, the road keeps going straight. You know, this is the correct direction, but you don't know exactly what's ahead because the light is only, you know, cause like he's only showing you so far. You get to that spot, he shows you more. You get to that spot, he shows you more. And he, you know, kind of used it as a depiction of like how he'll reveal things. You walk in that, he'll reveal, walk in that, you know? So there's definitely, I like that you mentioned the control thing. Like that's definitely a very fine line of like, tell me everything, you know? <laughs> so I, what you meant, you mentioned RTT and which is redemption to the nations. And mm -hmm. it's a church primarily out of Chattanooga. They have a couple other satellites, but I will link, uh, Kevin Wallace. That's the head pastor there. And awesome guy. Yeah. he's wonderful. And he is, uh, much more charismatic than I grew up and hit, especially their weeknight service, which I'll also, I'll send that link to the weeknights. There's so much meat in there of stuff. I never learned in a very conservative church and it is biblical and it is backed up and it is deep. So if you're looking for some deep stuff, he's pretty, pretty fantastic. His wife too, Devin. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna write that down. Um, I also think sometimes we overcomplicate God, you know, just talk to him. You see all those people fancy praying. You don't have to do that. How would you talk to a friend? How do you become friends with someone? You spend time with them, right? It, it's much simpler than we make it, I think. For sure. Consistency. Yeah. Is there anything else you have in your notes? I we actually um, hit all the ones I had. I wrote down, you know, because we were talking about the will and hearing from God and the different things. And I know I'd ever touched on the 2020 to situation with like the whole mission trip. And if we want, I mean, we can go over that sure. um, or we can talk about a different day or, but um, I was thinking of high schoolers and, you know, middle schoolers and, you know, how high schoolers have the weight of like what career and all that. And, you know, this isn't to scare nobody, but it's at the end of the day, it's a challenge. It's a get into your word, seek, be willing to lay aside your dreams and desires to see what the Lord has for you. Because I never thought I would be in real estate. I never thought I would have a call in my life to go into ministry. I never thought I would be to be on mentoring people. Never thought I would be on a podcast. But here I am. I never thought I would have a podcast. But here's the yeah. fun. The, you know, I think God has a sense of humor. Uh, I don't want to do anything that he's not behind or in front of. I just, yep. I don't. And so my life has taken so many directions but I know what happens when I do it all on my own and I push and I push and I push. And ultimately 
it does not work out. Yep. Yep. And I tell you what, um, because I always get, would get so aggravated because I, I did lose my scholarship at Cleveland State because I goofed off in high, I mean, uh, high school, what am I saying? When I first went because, you know, I was depressed. I was suicidal. I didn't know. I had no idea what I was dealing with was that. Now I know it's completely spiritual. Um, and I just didn't want to be there. I had no discipline. Um, but looking back, back after I lost it, like no doors would open up for me to be able to pay my way to go. Mm -hmm. And now that I know what I know, it wasn't God's will. I was praying, Lord, open this pool or bring this. And that I would do it out of my own strength somehow. But God never blessed it because it wasn't his will. Every time I've done something that was his will, he's blessed it. He's opened it up somehow, whether it was completely free, somebody else paid for it or however it was like he did it somehow because it was his will. And when we're pursuing things that is not his, he isn't going to bless it. Does that mean that things are not going to get attacked? No, because let me tell you something. When you're doing things that he wants, a lot of times you're going to get pushback because the enemy doesn't want it. So when I see pushback and that's where you have to get to a point where you're, where the apostle Paul talks about the problem with immaturity and, you know, how they should be teachers and that their senses are not trained. You know, the mature, their senses are trained. They know that's where you have to get to a point where is this God saying no and he's dismantling it? Or is this the enemy like, oh, I'm going after this. This is from the Lord. And I'm going to stop this. You know, that's where you have to know. That's where you have to know where you started. That's where, where, where did this come from? Was it from a me or was it from a God thing? You know, if that makes any sense. <laughs> I hope it no, does. It does. It does. I was just thinking I needed to look up a scripture. So, I, I mean, I do like to Google for scripture. It makes it real fast. But I like an actual Bible. Get a real Bible, you guys. Highlight it. Make notes in it. Get it all messy. I mean, don't be disrespectful yeah. to it. But yeah, it look at this, story. man. Look I at know, this. right? I've had this Bible so, since 2022. Um, okay, warning against falling away. Hebrews 5, 11. I'll mm. probably read to the end, 14. We have much to say about this, but it is hard to explain because you are slow to learn. Oh, so rude. <laughs> In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, yep. which is what we're talking yep. about, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not equated with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So I have a challenge yep. for you. How long have you been a believer? True believer is... It's okay. How long do you think it takes you to be pretty good at a certain topic? If it was for a work promotion, if it was for your next grade, if it was a hobby that you were really interested, in, how much time and resource would you dedicate towards it? Last time I checked, needing just milk and not solid food is actually for infants, maybe a couple toddlers. Go ahead with what you were going to say. Cause I said, how much time do you need? Um, when you first, you know, mentioned the Christian part, um, cause I thought, okay, I got my heart truly right, June 9th, 2019, which I mentioned earlier in that podcast. But I also know that in less than a year of that walk, I was free from very demonic chains that very few people know of. Um, Quickly. 2020. <laughs> I remember this. Um, who was this woman that spoke on the power of shouting? It's a lady who is over the ramp, uh, Karen Wheaton. Yeah. She talked about the power of shouting. I was in my truck and I, it was either the end of June or early July. She, I was in my truck. I was worshiping the Lord and I just started shouting. And guys, I was not raised around where shouting was a big thing. If any at all, I didn't do it. I was very wonderful. Jesus. Da, 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 da. No, and you're not a me. loud personality. Like you're a sweet, you're not a loud person. So I began to shout. I was like, you are God. You are wonderful. You are my Lord. I mean, shouting. And it's like this roof literally broke. And like the glory of the Lord fell on my truck. And I, it was just such a deep peace. And there's a part of me that wants to be like, that was a baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I don't know. 
I was, <laughs> I had no, I didn't even know what the, what the bad news was. He will was. fall like that. I've heard other yeah. people actually talk about that in their home and their roofs, yeah. op- feeling like it completely yeah. opens. Yes. But it's because yes. you were in a full position of submission. Mm-hmm. You were not, you know, they're in acts that says, oh, they must all be drunk. And they're like, they're not drunk. They're full of the Holy Spirit. They're, so, they're waiting in expectation. They're, they're like, what is God going to do? What is the Holy Spirit going to do? He said to stay here. He said to wait here. He said the Holy Spirit's going to come. What's it going to be like? They didn't, you know, like, this was something new, but there was also like, we're going to be obedient. We're going to stay in this heart position of expectation so we can receive what the Lord wants. And when that happens, the unexpected happened to the point it was affecting people on the outer side. Because it and, was such in a magnitude uh, from the inside. And to those of you that are like, oh, okay, you guys lost me. This is too much. I'm going to sign off. <laughs> I want to challenge you for a second. I grew up in a church where I, we would kneel to pray. Hymnals only. We had a piano, flute, you know, like there was no, there wasn't a speaker. Uh, I mean, as in like amplifying music. Um, mm-hmm. So how do you behave when you're at your favorite sports event or you're watching it on TV? How do you behave at your favorite music concert? How do you behave when your kid is doing something amazing? Do you lose it? Do you go a little wild? Do you have fun? Are you screaming like the sports fans scream in our nuts? Yep. You're why would you not do more for your heavenly father? Come on. And I am not, I am not a, I'm a pretty stoic worshiper naturally. I will say that. I don't think you have to be outspoken, but it's a challenge to you of, are you coming uninhibited to the Lord? And that mm-hmm. will look different for different people. But a lot of people are like this at worship because we're looking around and we're worried. You were there in a space giving it all to the Lord mm-hmm. and he responded to you. <clears throat> Yep. And I'll actually go as far as this. You brought this up and maybe this will set some people free from some chains or I called it a net. Um, Cause when I was called to first Cleveland back in 2021, which uh, I left um, cause I was attending OCI, which was the ramp at the time through 2020. Cause there was really not any other church open, <laughs> but it was so good for me because I was, you know, exposed it's to the gifts. I was like <laughs> dancing, like, it's okay to dance. It's okay to dance to the mm-hmm. Lord. Mm-hmm. And, um, that was one of the first few times I heard the Lord speak so sharply because I was invited to that church and I was like, no, I'm not going back. I don't like all the different services. I was like, no, I'm not going back into the denomination. I don't want it. And, but I kept having that pressure, like a pull there. I was like, no. And I kept going back to what I wanted because first Cleveland was not what I wanted. And I heard the Lord so vastly say, do you want what I want or do you want what you want? And that's why I always say, are you pursuing what you want or are you pursuing what the Lord wants? There's a significant difference. And I say that with marriages, relationships, friendships, everything, because it goes to everything. But the point of my message was when I got to first Cleveland, I knew that I actually had not been baptized yet since I truly got my heart right with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, there had been quote unquote opportunities come up, but it was a very manipulating opportunity that the Lord was not involved in. And that's a whole different thing we can talk about a different day. But um, I knew I needed to get baptized. My friend Tammy Murray, she was praying for me, but I just, I mean, Pastor Jordan, he's like, I mean, he literally they had it open. Like they didn't care. They had another service. Like they had the baptism pool open for people to come to get baptized. And that's how it was for months there. And, uh, I knew I needed to be back in the choir. Like I needed to see, because I ran for many, many, many years. And when I was started going to first Cleveland, I was very like, I've got to look the best because that's how my mindset was. Cause I was still, even though like I had the relationship I could hear from, I was still in like a lot of the religious stuff, you know, like got to dress to the heel, da, da, da. But I joined choir and I was very faithful to go every single Wednesday night to practice, do my part, be faithful, because I knew that's what the Lord wanted me to do. I just knew I needed to stop running. But I was in so much bondage that nobody knew about. I was unable to get up on the platform to lead worship with my brothers and sisters. And nobody had a clue. Nobody knew. And um, going into November, so I was baptized in September Things started shifting. Lord brought new people in my life. 
November, um, I remember I was at one of the first college midweeks things. And I remember so badly just wanting to raise my hands. I just wanted just to praise the Lord so badly. But yeah, I could not do it. It was like I was literally like trapped. Mm. And the thought of people of what they're going to say, you're, gonna, you're crazy, your attention, blah, 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 all these things were so overwhelming that it was taking away of my heart position and everything to truly be in a posture of worship. And I didn't know at the time that's bondage. Yes. Filled with the and spirit, a lot of people live there and don't baptized, know. Baptized, filled with the spirit, baptized, going to church faithfully, still in bondage, unknowingly, blindsided, mm -hmm. had no idea. So hold on. And I knew after that night, something's wrong. I was going to counseling still at that time uh, to Miss Rebecca, I think her name is. And I told her, I just opened her up about this. And then she talked, started talking to me about spiritual warfare, how the enemy doesn't want you to praise the Lord. He doesn't want you to do those things because those things are biblical, raising your hand, shouting, dancing into the Lord, you know, and <laughs> of all places, y'all, I kid you not, kid you not. I was on TikTok and this dude out of nowhere pops up on my thing talking. And he said, if you worship the Lord one way, you know, freely, all these different things, and you get around a whole different group and you change the way you worship because the people around you, you're not truly worshiping the Lord. You're worshiping man. And that truth broke whatever was on me. And I'm telling you, I was like, ew, I'm not going to worship man. I'm going to worship God. And something about between the counselor and like getting woke up that night and that person, it just pierced through where it just cut me off, like cut that off me. And I remember the first time that I got up there and this is uh, some people might feel like I'm about to say in a minute. It was the Christmas presentation. I was on the very back and was it Jim? Yeah, Jim. He told me, he said, after the thing was, I just love watching you sing. He's like, you were just so whatever because I was the first time I have ever truly worshiped the Lord freely. <laughs> I mean, it was just like, I mean, I was just like, and the person beside me was just like this. Like, it was completely different, like completely different. I mean, I was literally free, like first time ever. Like, I wasn't even like that in my truck. And so yet, I, I wanted that, you know? I, I hope that you guys are seeing this on video because <laughs> your whole face, like, completely changed. As you're talking about, you mean you're just, your face is Because there's right more back. freedom in Jesus. It doesn't stop at salvation. But salvation is the beginning i agree with you and you're also demonstrating that you're hearing from the lord you are in relationship with him when you are worshiping and mm -hmm. people don't realize worship is really a position of our heart to be available to the lord and people miss that they completely miss it and it made me think of um i love i love praying i love just sitting and praying and we had a prayer worship night at our house and my husband afterwards said, you know, I looked over at you when you were so peaceful and I could just see the Holy Spirit all over you. And I was a little bit jealous. I know it wasn't it was that sweet thing. Said that, but he's like, I was a little bit jealous because I don't like I don't get that when I pray. And um, as he's talking, I'm kind of, you know, I shouldn't be giggling. But inside I'm like, well, I know I can see when the Holy Spirit's all over him, too. Right. So. As he's saying that, I'm like, well, thank you for saying that. And, you know, I was describing to him what God was saying to me in the living room there. He said, but God shows up to you in dreams like crazy. He wakes up every morning. He's had three or four dreams. He's in the word. He's writing notes down. I'm like, I'm a little jealous of that. I mean, I know God does speak to me that way, but not in the same way. Right. So just know, or like in worship, you might see Christy up there just God, and, and it does change over time too. Like he'll show up in different ways from us. It doesn't mean that you only get one gift from him. It says they are all available to us. He wants to just fill you and mm -hmm. walk with you. And that is such a beautiful way to live. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to miss out on that. Chris, what Christy said is true. Salvation is the first step. Salvation is not the end step. Yep. And there's so many Christians that are still walking in so much bondage and then they frame it with a, well, that must be God's will and it's false. And it's, and they don't even realize it's not even, or, or, is the blood of Jesus so cheap and chinzy to you that he can't break 
whatever you're dealing with. Correct. And, and don't think that just because you're a believer, it's going to be an easy walk now, or it's all done. No, we, it says, take heart. You will have troubles, right? That is the truth. And when one thing goes often another comes. Life is difficult. There are lots of challenges. Unfortunately, there are testings. We, we are a sinful world, but it is so different when you're walking it with the Lord than when you're walking it alone. Why would you want to walk it alone ever? Yep. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I just like, I just was thinking of this a minute ago, like whoever is listening to this, you know, I, I was talking about originally, we're, we're going to come in, we're going to talk about the will of God, but it's really in order to do the will of God, you got to be able to hear from him. But can I just say what really shifted my pivotal point with the Lord drastically was getting free in worship because if you are not free in worship everything else is I think it's going to be hindered and I'm just declaring right now whoever hears this that wherever you are that you are not free and you are going to become free in the name of Yeshua if you still have chains that need to be broken if you're in alignment with beliefs that are not of God I'm praying and I'm decreeing now in Jesus name all false teaching must be broken off your eyes and your ears your heart and your soul in Jesus name and the word of God is going to become enlightened to you like you have never ever have seen it before you're going to see things pop off the page the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you like you have never heard him speak I Lord I just ask that you would give them hearing ears wake in their ears so they can hear you not a deceiving spirit not uh, not the enemy's voice for I say they will hear the voice of the Lord they will know the voice of the enemy from the voice of the Lord and when you come to them in dreams whether it's a mystery dream that they have to seek you to understand it Lord I ask that you'd give them revelation and follow to the one that is still feeling hindered in their worship I say the chains must be broken that fear of man of their thoughts must be broken in the name of Jesus Lord I ask that you would impart a boldness a Holy Spirit fire boldness into these women and into these men and to these teenagers and whoever hears this father I ask that you free them free them in Jesus name for when there is for wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Father, fill them up in the name of Jesus. Let them not be dry. Let them have the, the, the flow of the spirit, the river of life, Father. I thank you for what you're going to do in their life. I thank you for what you're going to do with the, the people in their lives, Lord, that are going to be impacted wherever you lead them, Lord. Let them not live a life that is pleasing to themselves and the people around them, but is pleasing to you, Lord. Help them to understand what your will is by your word and what it looked like to to your son. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would just begin to form their mind to the likeness of Christ, to walk in the mind of Christ, but not in the mind of man. And I say that flesh every day must be crucified in Jesus' name. It must come into submission to the Holy Spirit. It must be be silent in Jesus' name. And Father, if there is anything in me and Stephanie and whoever listens to this, Lord, that is not formed into you, Lord, get rid of it. Destroy it. If they need to go through deliverance, Lord, let it start here today, Father, that they would begin to unknow and understand that they could be in their house, they can be in their car and receive freedom in Jesus' name. Father, I ask that you give them revelation they've never had before. Father, I ask that you put friendships and alignments that they need, Father, to grow in to and to be molded and sharpened, Lord. And Father, if they are in friendships, relationships, a job or something they are not supposed to be at or into, get rid of it, dismantle it in Jesus' name. Father, would you awaken your bride, your church, that they would do what you need them to do, Father, to prepare for the wait for your son to come back. Let us be a pure bride that is spotless. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing of your soul? Has your, has your garments been washed white as snow lord would you wash us white as snow lord father would you make known your mystery of your will would you enlighten our the heart of our eyes father let them not be blind but let them see father in the name of jesus thank you holy spirit thank you jesus and father whoever is listening to this that might not be saved holy spirit give them encouragement to cry out to jesus give them encouragement to cry out let them know that the father doesn't just love them then but loves you now and forevermore. Oh, Father, would you give them strength to say, Jesus, save me for I am a sinner and I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want you to lead my life. I don't want to live for myself and my desires, but I want to live for you and what you want. I want you to be first, Jesus. I want you to have your way to be Lord of my life. Thank you. 
Thank you, Father. And Father, I ask that you bless Stephanie's podcast, Lord. I ask that you bring people. Would you put an anointing on it, Father? And the people who are struggling to do what you want them to do, Father, give them strength. Let the winds of heaven blow upon it. Bring resurrection life, Father. In the name of Jesus, bring the resurrection life, Father. And every voice of the enemy saying that you are not good enough, that you have no purpose, I say it must be broken now in Jesus' name. That lie that's saying, Oh, that you need to just stop trying, that nobody loves you, that must stop now. That is a lie of the enemy, for you have life in Jesus. You have a purpose. For Ephesians 2.10, I believe it says, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good work, good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. Father, I ask that you would just prepare them for what you want to walk for them to walk into, Lord. Would you prepare the high schoolers, Lord? Would you break off the discouragement of the world? Would you break off the anxiety? All anxiety must go in Jesus' name. All depression must be broken off them in Jesus' name. Father, would you give the doctors wisdom and revelation for people who need healing? Healing, whatever it may be, Father, would you let it be done in Jesus' name? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Let thy will be done, O Father. Let thy will be done, O Lord. Let it be a light unto us, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Hmm. Christy is a little powerhouse and we have so many stories like it's funny. I know, I know, that. I know you didn't know but it's so funny how God puts us together in really odd circumstances where we just have to go to war in prayer and I'm telling you yeah. you need a Christy in your life everybody needs a Christy in your life and here's the thing she's like a little peanut of a human she's like small but mighty girl doesn't mess around uh, so I'll slay a demon in a second. <laughs> you ask my mom. <laughs> Go and follow her, you guys. I will put all of her contact information. Um, I just love her heart, especially for young people, what she's doing. And I think Christy is such a good example that it it's not about your age. Your mm -hmm. maturity and your walk of faith is not about your age. It's about your willingness. It's about digging into the Lord and leaning into what he has for you. And uh, yeah, there's there's a lot more of that where that came from. I thank you so yeah, much I'm for coming on. 24, look, age means nothing. 24, I know it doesn't. And I love how God puts us together. You know, we're 20 years <clears throat> apart, no problem. Yeah. So, anyway, I will, I'll have to have you on again, but we, we gotta break this into two podcasts. So we're like, <laughs> we're cut off. I'm I told you, I felt like this is gonna be a part two. I was like, uh. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop the recording. I hope that today's podcast was a blessing to you. We appreciate you over here at Live Your Life Out Loud. If you could go follow us, share this podcast, and give us a review, it would greatly help us get the word out. Have a wonderful week.